Box two box is back with another video. Millie, what are we doing on this stupendous day? Today, boys, we are going to be doing a tier list of the top transfers of the last decade. There are some big names and even bigger flops, boys. Are we ready to go? I'm ready to go, Varva. I don't know about you. Let's get it. Before we begin, if you're a fan of our tier list videos, make sure to subscribe and follow us for more content. Boys, the first transfer up, it is the Arsenal man himself, Declan Rice. Where are we putting him? So this is this summer's most expensive transfer. It could have been Moises Caicedo. Yeah, it could have been, but Declan Rice sneaked in in the last second. Both were 116.6 mil, I believe. Very expensive transfers. What do you think? I don't know what I'm feeling. I'm going to explain myself before I give my rating. Okay. Generational midfielder. Generational, every single sense of the word. This brother is different gravy. Maybe is hasn't been as good at Arsenal as I thought he would be. That's true. But has still been good right now. Mm -hmm. I would put this as a B, but I could definitely see him moving to A and potentially even S as we as the years go on. Vavra, I'm surprised. B tier for Declan Rice. You, that's your dog right there. That's your boy. He is my boy, but I think we're going to see a couple of transfers here that will be A tier that you can't really put him on the same like level as them yet. W what is he missing, Varvar? Clearly because I would honestly, I'd put him A tier. I think he's one of those guys. He's going to be one of those guys for Arsenal as well. But what are we ranking them based on? Like, is it potential? Is it the transfer rating? Or? How, how much they were worth of their money, basically. Okay. 160 mil for Declan Rice. Right now, he looks like a player that's worth 100 mil. So for that, I would put him... He's not priceless, let's just say. He's not playing like a priceless player like Rodri is for Man City. But if you were to develop a bit more, he needs to up his passing a bit because he's playing in Arsenal. But that player, different gravy to everyone else on the pitch every single game. I don't know. I think the fact that you said generational and the price tag doesn't really... Like, if he were to be generational, I don't think 120 mil would be enough for him. But right now, he's playing like 120 mil player and for me i think that's underachieving for declan rice yeah i think i agree more with millie i'd say b maybe high b i think he could be better but he's gonna get there he has potential he's insane we all know declan rice clearly declan rice has that potential to be even an s tier player he has shown glimpses of that throughout his arsenal stint so far but Varvar, I'm going to have to go with you Go with you here. I think he's going to be B tier. He just needs a bit more time to show his full $166 million worth. So we're going to put him B tier. Just a quick disclaimer. If this was Moises Caicedo, I'd also put him... Ah, is he as good as Declan Rice? No, I don't think so. I'd put him C if that was Moises. Right now, uh, he might careful. not be as good. Yeah, right now, I don't know. It's a little shaky. Right <laughs> yeah, it's getting... Uh, Honestly, I think people have been overhating his performances. I, I think agree. he's been pretty good. I, I think agree. he's been pretty good, but just Declan Rice is a whole other level of midfielder. In my For opinion. now, yeah. Declan Rice is being slotted into the B tier. Up next, we have a Chelsea Dawn. This one's going to be contentious. It is Enzo Fernandez for a record fee. Enzo Fernandez, que jugador. But does he really represent that price tag? I don't know yet. I, honestly, I think for both sides, this has not been a successful transfer yet. Even for Chelsea? Even for Chelsea, because they did not need him at that point. Like, you are such a terrible team. Why do you need to spend 120 mil on a midfielder? And then you go buy Caicedo, you go buy Lavia, you have Gallagher there, but you buy Ugo Chokwu, <laughs> the, the French player that they bought. Why do you need to spend 120 mil on Enzo Fernandez? Their midfield was the problem. I don't think he fixed all, the, all of their problems in the midfield, but he was definitely like an essential piece, in my opinion. I agree. I think Enzo is one of those players that slots into literally any team in the world. He is, he's an automatic starter for pretty much every team in the world. But at Chelsea, as he looked like an automatic starter for every team in the world. But we know he, he could tough. be that. But it's tough. But has anyone looked like an automatic starter for anyone in the world? No. At Chelsea? No. But I don't know. I, I think this is a C tier for me. It's like he, it, he could definitely move up, but he has not shown a reason to be in B tier with Declan Rice, in my opinion. I think that... Enzo, he's just been put in a situation where it's it's not benefiting him whatsoever, where you have multiple managers coming in, changing their philosophy, and he's there trying to keep everything together. He's basically trying to be the glue of the team, and 
he's he's new to this. He's new to the Chelsea life. So it it I mean it's unfortunate. I Varvar, I'm gonna put him maybe high C, low B. Maybe, but I agree, nothing close to Declan Rice right now. Yeah, once again, I agree with Millie. I think low B is good. He hasn't really touched maybe Declan Rice levels of, of potential, but you know, like the, the line is very close, I find. I don't think it's close at all. Declan Rice is levels above a lot, a lot of midfielders in the Premier League. I swear Enzo just got like his sixth win in the Premier League or fifth win in the Premier but League. But is that his fault? Exactly. It's his team's fault. Did Chelsea need to spend 120 mil on the midfielder, but they're still losing every single game? You, like, think, you think they would have won more games with Declan Rice? All I'm saying is that if that was a, a Frenchman at Manchester United, the midfielder we're going to speak of in the future, things would have been diff very different in this tier list. But whatever, we'll do B tier since you guys want to do B. Lower B tier at least. I'm going to agree with you there. I think he is lower B tier. He's really the only influential player on Chelsea that's really made a difference throughout the last 18 months. But up next, we have Jack Grealish to City for 117 million euros. This one's going to be a tough one, boys. What are we thinking? I'm in a love-hate relationship with this guy. Some years I like him, some years I completely hate him. I don't know what to think about him. Like, he's, he's a good player, but... Once again, does he justify his price tag? I don't know. I don't think so. At one point, I thought Jack Grealish was going to be a future icon of the sport. I don't know about icon, but continue. He definitely was going to be. When he left Aston Villa for Manchester City, I was like, my prediction that year was Jack Grealish is winning player this season in the Premier League. Yeah. He has not lived up to those expectations at all. He's still a decent squad option. He's been good, though. That's, that's the thing that... He's been good. Well, define good. I mean, that's is why. it good for a hundred and... How much was it? 117 million. And don't forget, you're in a pep system with other elite players as well. And you're pretty much looking like the worst one out of all of them. 117 million to just good enough. get fouls and, and, yep. and ball retention. You could find a winger like that, I'm sure, for 40 mil. Well, just look at Doku. Yeah, but <laughs> Doku's better than Grealish, debatably. That's why. Debatably better. I don't know, we'll see, but I'm, I'm putting him D tier for me because it's not an F tier. He's still a useful player, but has he been a good? He's been good, sure, but he hasn't been 117 mil good and City would still be the same team without him in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, I agree with that. D sounds harsh, but low key, like, no, I agree. I think that that passes. Grealish has had his moments where he's shown to be that world-class winger, but for 117 million, that has to be game in, game out. You have to be that guy. And clearly he's not that guy at City because he's just getting lost with the whole squad. You don't you don't know if he's playing. You don't know if he's not playing. You don't know if he's even doing well because you have Haaland there. You have Rodri. You have everyone else that's at the top of their game. So I think we're going to have to actually put him D tier. I think F is a little too harsh. He does contribute to the squad, but for 117 million, boys, come on. You got to do better. And yeah, like... Man City fans love talking about this guy as if he's like a, a creative player, you know, like don't look at his stats, don't look at this. But then someone like Doku just comes in and completely like destroys you stat wise and ability wise. Another know. comparison was James Madison this season at Spurs yeah. has been ridiculous. Yeah. And Jack Grealish was way better than James Madison ever was at Leicester City. Exactly. So for me, Jack Grealish being used like this is just a pure waste of talent. And he should have gone to someone like Arsenal. If he went to Arsenal, that would have been demonic. Over Martinelli? Maybe. All right, boys, we're taking it back to 2020. We have Kai Havertz what? to Chelsea. There's a lot of Premier League players here. Not all of them panning out. Let's see if Havertz is one of those boys. Well, I can guarantee you Havertz is not one of those boys. See a final score, Varvar. Come on. Yeah, it depends. Are we seeing it as a Chelsea fan or as an external person? Because, I mean, both. You're the for me, the rating would be the same as both. Because, I mean, if you want to base your entire judgment on one goal that a player scored on a breakaway, but it's just not a random goal. It's a Champions League final winning goal. But anyone would have scored that goal. For me, the pass was nicer than the goal. The oh, issue, of course, is, but the issue Mason is Mount, that. By the way. <laughs> The issue is, is that that's the only thing people bring up to justify his price tag, justify his stint at Chelsea, is that he just scored a Champions League final goal. That's fantastic. But 
what has he done besides that? He doesn't really contribute. He never really contributed to Chelsea's attack as well as he should have. And the fact that he never really had a strong role as a solid striker or a winger just really showed that he never fit that squad to begin with. Definitely a flop. But yeah, it's like you're paying, how much was he? 60 million? You're paying 60 million. So you're paying 60 million for a Champions League win. I don't know. Honestly, changed my mind. Timo Werner was a better signing than Kai Havertz for Chelsea. Changed my mind. Timo Werner is actually a pretty good player, in my opinion. I guess. I don't, I don't even... Irrelevant players, to be honest. Firms, to make matters worse, he was actually 80 million. That's how bad it was. 80 million, not 60. 80 million. Okay, that kind of changes my opinion. 80 million for a Champions League winning goal, maybe not worth it. A little steep. It's a little, a little bit steep. steep but. And then he, sold, they got, he got sold to Arsenal for 65. But according to Chelsea fans, 80 and 65, they made a profit, according to them, because of like amortization and all these stuff. They made a profit. Chelsea fans, the way things are going, they have to find every win possible, even if it's through selling Kai Havertz. So boys, is he going to be the first F tier player? Oh, we're going down to F. I won't give him F because look, he did score a CL winning goal. Yeah. So I'll say D. Stick him right next to Grealish, even though I think Grealish is way higher than him on D. I'll, I'll stick him in D. Yeah, I agree. Mm, that's why Grealish, I would put him F. I don't know. I, I, was, I was protecting my boy Havertz, but then... Low-key, yeah, I agree. He's not in the same tier as Grealish. Definitely Put him out. Put what, him what is he doing with Grealish? Like, Grealish contributed more consistently than Havertz, I find. That's why. That's if, the thing. if your best contribution, other than that CL winning goal, if your second best contribution was getting sold, then <laughs> that means you were not good. And they celebrated you. Yeah, they so. celebrated you getting sold. F. There it is. We have our first F-tier player of the day. The next one, though. It's looking kind of scary. It is Felix to Atletico Madrid. Boys, if I don't see any F tier shouts, if I speak, I'm in trouble. Who, who's going to start this? I'll start it. I think João Felix to Atletico Madrid was labeled as the worst transfer of all time. It's it not the worst transfer of all reason. time. For good reason. It's not, he's not the worst transfer of all time. No, it was. They still got some decent years out of him. Did they misuse him? Yes, they misused 100%. him. 100%. Was he still a decent player on some pretty decent athletic sides? Yes. Yes, he was. And I think this is a D tier, and I think it's the same idea as Grealish. 100%. He contributed to a good team, but he's not being used to his maximum. And it's not like Havertz. Havertz at Arsenal, terrible player. He's still not good. Yeah, exactly. João Felix at Barca is a good player, and you can tell there was a player there. He proved that the transfer was the problem rather than the player like with Havertz, you know? Exactly. So yeah, I would put him like lower D, but definitely lower than Grealish, 100%. Boys, come on. It, Barca did not pay 127 million for him. Atletico did, and you're talking about his Barca stint. First off, I think Atletico paid way too much, way too early. God was 19 years old, 18 years old, and you're spending that kind of money. You're investing in potential, Millie. But the potential wasn't there for Atletico. He's playing, he's playing his trade at Barca now. And then he played his trade at Chelsea before that. Come on, man. I don't think he's worth the money. Don't get me wrong, I didn't say he's not worth the money. Yeah, definitely overpriced. Like, would you pay 130 mil for him now at 23 no, years old? No, without a doubt, no. So imagine at 19 years old. But I'd pay 50, 60 mil. Would I pay 50, 60 mil for Kai Havertz? No, I would never even come close to him with 50, 60 mil. Boys, if this isn't an F, I don't know what is, man. I don't Kai know. Kai Havertz to Chelsea was a worse transfer than than João Felix to Atletico. Yeah, but at least Havertz won it. Like, listen, I'm going back to that Champions League, but at least he won a Champions League. But that's a team game. achievement. Yeah. It's a team achievement. That he contributed to. Felix has not contributed anything to Atletico besides a couple good performances and basically just telling them that he only wants to play for Barca. They paid over 100 mil for a player that only wants to play for Barcelona. Millie's kind of convincing me. I don't know. I think, look, the player was there. You didn't yes. spend 120 mil on a player that was not good. Right. Of course, I agree. But it has to be good for your Chelsea team. Chelsea spent 80 mil on a player that I wouldn't even... You couldn't pay me to take, me on, take him on Manchester United. So, I'd rather Scott McTominay than Kai Havertz. No cap. I don't know about that. Sorry, Varvar. Majority rules here. I think I swayed firms. Felix is F tier, but he will not topple the king of F tier, Kai Havertz, who is going right below that. Up next, oh boy, a little French connection here. It is Mbappe to PSG. Goodness gracious, where are we putting this? 
Now, if we're talking what? about just pure talent, okay. this is S tier. Of course. Without right. a doubt. Yes. Of course. But. Oh, he said the but. Brother did not win a Champions League. Doesn't matter. It does matter. If you're. What's the number one thing about Neymar going to PSG? What do you mean? He didn't win a Champions League. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. But people forget that he was a good player and he Neymar, balled out. Exce exceptional player, Mbappe, exceptional player. Exactly. If I'm going off, my personal opinion, it's an S tier transfer. It's an S tier yes. transfer. You got the best player in the world at your team for what is it now, six years or something like that? I agree. It's the best. You you can't debate S tier. But a lot of the people, in, let us know in the comments if you think Mbappe to PSG is an S tier or an A tier because for me it's S tier, but some people think he didn't win a CL, so it's A tier. It's a good question, actually. I, I didn't think about it like that, but I just see PSG, I see Mbappe's face right next to them. So to me, automatically, that's, that's, it can't be lower than a B. So it got to be like S or A. And but Firms, he brings up that he needed to win a Champions League, but there, there are circumsta different circumstances to that. Neymar was coming from prime Barca, yeah. winning a Champions League. He had that experience. Mbappe, the young lad, the, the, he just came, he just came out of the womb pretty much. And you're expecting him to win a Champions League. Like for me, that's guaranteed S tier. He's done more than enough to bring PSG to that top echelon that they've been wanting for years. And how much was the transfer? Mbappe was 180 million. Honestly, considering the other numbers on this list, that's a bargain. Yeah, and considering like the best players in the world at that point, obviously he wasn't the best player in the world, but you have this like 18 year old kid from Monaco tearing it up in the Champions League. Who else could you get? The oh. only thing I bring up is if this brother were to leave tomorrow to Real Madrid, what do you rate the transfer? S. It's, it's an S. Guaranteed an S. I've never seen a more sure thing than Mbappe since like Messi, Ronaldo. Like, have you ever seen a Neymar. young player? Okay, Neymar, I understand, but Mbappe's been more consistent. Yes. Then who? Then Neymar. Up to Mbappe's age, Neymar is more consistent. Yeah, ne okay, I understand, but at PSG? Both Neymar, at transfer. PSG, obviously Mbappe. So I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's a good question too. Boys, come on now. I'll allow the S tier. I'm not, I'm not against the S tier. I still think he's an S tier, but I'm saying like... He needed it. It could be. I, I could hear the debate for A tier, but I'll, I'll, I'm saying S tier also. I agree. I could see the debate for the A tier, but he just, he was such a sure thing. Like you, you saw 180 mil to PSG. You knew right away. Okay. Yeah. He's a star. He's yeah, gonna be yeah. Guy. yeah. 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 I guarantee. Written in the stars. Like he, he is that guy. There's no one else you could have gotten. That's, that's even that level. Like he is, he's the best player in the world right now. So boys, I think it's settled. We have our first S tier player. Mbappe to PSG for 180 million euros. Lock it in. Up next, we have another PSG Don. I think everyone knows what's coming up. It is Neymar to PSG for 222 million euros. Now, if you don't use the trophy logic for Mbappe, I better not hear anything about Champions League for Neymar. No, completely different scenarios in my opinion. <laughs> completely so you're moving the goalposts now no, because I don't think so. Neymar by Mbappe logic is an S tier transfer as well. Neymar was a signing that PSG needed to make to bring themselves up to those elite teams. But I think Mbappe was the better transfer than Neymar. I disagree. No, I agree with that, but I don't think the Neymar transfer was bad. Not that it was bad, but- What, 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 what tier? A tier. Okay, you that's see, that's, that's not good. that bad. I thought you were going to say something like C or B. Yeah. No, no, come on. He was still one of the best. Like, he was pretty much the best player in the world. He was the best in player time. in the world during COVID. He was the best player in the world. Those, that Atalanta yeah. performance, that Leipzig performance. All those Champions League performance. Even in the final with Di Maria, that was insane. Well, he, we, firms, uh, Neymar Hive here, we, we did kind of miss a couple sitters there. But, but Doesn't nevertheless, matter. this brother, honestly... The, the one of the most entertaining players to watch. I, I, I'm putting him S, but you guys can debate what you want. No, I would put him A. It's difficult to say because Neymar came into PSG with such higher expectations. Like I said before, the man was coming off a Champions League victory with Barcelona. His expectations was that he was going to be the next king of Paris. He was going to bring them to the promised land. And Mbappe was just the cherry on top. He was the youngster that was going to take it to the next generation. But the fact that Neymar wasn't able to do it, I don't think takes away from his value or where, where we rank him, but it is a bigger factor in my opinion than giving it like putting that same thing on Mbappe, if that makes sense. 
there's definitely people watching right now that are they saying, probably want to rip the TV yeah. off. <laughs> what lot are of, these guys saying? A lot of people are saying Neymar's like a D tier transfer, C tier transfer. That's Be crazy to me. That's blasphemous. When, when you said uh, Joao Felix to Atleti was the worst transfer of all time, I've heard so many people say Neymar to PSG is the worst transfer of all time. If you legitimately think Neymar to PSG is the worst transfer of all time, Please just go turn on his highlight tape from any of his first like three or four seasons in Paris. It's the most ridiculous thing you will ever watch. Yeah. It's because they bring up the off field issues, the injuries, the controversy in the locker room. There's when so you much are other baggage. Neymar, when you are Neymar, it you are allowed. You. You're allowed you're to do superstar. those things. You you when you show up to the pitch every single game and you're the best player every game and every team just says I don't care about how you defend the other 10 people, just defend this guy. Break You're this allowed guy. to go do that. I feel like also the fact that people weren't really attentive to uh, Ligue 1, I find that takes away from him being like an S tier transfer. Obviously he's not, but like people were seeing, okay, he's in the French league. You know, the, the tax. He, like, it was like, he, he, so went what? Easier. Yeah. he went easier, but he was still performing in exactly. Champions League. He was still doing well. Exactly. It was it really his fault that they collapsed. No, not at all. No, not, not at all. And it's not. It's it, there's a bunch of issues in Paris, but whatever. We'll I'll allow you to put them at eight tier. We'll I go think eight tier is pretty safe. I think that was the best choice. I don't think he's at that same level as Mbappe. We're gonna put him eight tier. Sounds good, Millie. Who's next? Varvar, you're gonna have a lot to say about this one. We're taking it way back. It is Pogba to Man United for ninety million. Where are we putting the jugador? Floor is yours, Varvar. If this was just my tier list, I'm gonna have to include Europeans in here. Yeah. My tier list, this is an A transfer. No. I think it's an A transfer because if you bought that player in today's current market, how much would it be? Like prime prime Juve Pogba? Well, his prime wasn't in Juve, but that's a whole other Yeah, but I'm saying prime Juve, like right before United yes, bought him. Yes, right before United Hold bought up. him. You think his prime was at Man U? Prime was definitely at Manchester United. Oh, his first and no, second no, no. season at United were the best seasons Pogba had. Have you watched the Juventus Pogba? I did. And I'm telling you, first year, first year of Manchester United, Ibra ruined this guy's season. Why? He, it's not true. It's 100% true. Ibra missed sitter after sitter after sitter that Pogba created for him on a plate. Like legit breakaways and then Ibra would just miss every single time. It was, I was actually like, look, looking back, Ibra was still a good player, but this brother was one of the worst finishers I've ever seen play striker at Manchester United. <laughs> yeah, that's, at that's, Manchester United. Put an I'm gonna, that's crazy uh, to say. His career, he was a good finisher. At Manchester United was missing tap in after tap in after tap. In. But that tells you more about the squad he was playing in rather than he got handed opportunities on a silver platter every single game and yeah. missed. Pogba was giving him these opportunities. I find Pogba was definitely a good transfer for, for Man United, but I don't know. Like he was, he wasn't that good. Like he was good. He was. But the first two years he was amazing. Like, like the first like, two years. Well, yeah. There's a whole what four years after that. Five years after that, come on. Look, there was a good portion of time after that. But he, he was good in spurts after that too. I remember at the beginning of one Premier League season, he had like seven assists or eight assists in the first like three games. He was he was very good. There was left wing Pogba during COVID. He was amazing. I remember a performance against Sheffield United. This guy was ridiculously good. But look, I, I can see how you can say B, even maybe even C, I think C stretching it, but anything lower is crazy. Yeah, I think I think C is the lowest I'd go there. Just listen, Pogba was coming from a Juventus with Pirlo and Vidal next to him. Like yep. you cannot learn from a better group of guys than that. And then he's coming to United and it's just a, a carousel of midfielders. It's really tough to gel with players that you're only playing with a couple games. Ander Herrera, Fred. Matic, like this is not Pirlo. Remember low. back in the day? Yeah, but I don't think he played at the same time as Schneiderlin. I think he Schneiderlin was 2014 and then Pogba replaced him, kind of. But nevertheless... He was not supported, that's He for was sure. not supported at all. Like, imagine we have Casemiro now. Imagine you put in Casemiro prime with Pogba. Pogba with Casemiro. Look, Casemiro's not been good this season, but prime Casemiro with prime Pogba, like that's yeah. like you're- You're cooking. You're CL, Copenhagen, we aren't worrying about Copenhagen oh over God. here. Copenhagen making this game. The issue is that prime Pogba only would come out of his cave a couple times, a couple times a year. That's that not true. It. In his first two seasons, his it first was- two seasons. Every single that's... game, the brother was the best player on the pitch, every game. 
But you just mentioned Ander Herrera is on that team. So obviously he is already the best player on the pitch. Like he's, he doesn't have competition. I agree, but I think that was another issue that we had in our squad. Look, the issues of Paul Pogba to Manchester United was not because of Paul Pogba. No, uh, I agree with that. Some of them were self-inflicted, but we won't get into that. A little self-inflicted a little bit. Look, I also I, think... I say A, but... I, I don't... I, a I would is say too far. split down the middle. A or C, I'd go B. It will do B, Millie. I'm okay with B. I don't know, because the thing is that if Pogba were to go to another club instead of Man United, I think this would skyrocket to maybe A, maybe Like if you went to S. Arsenal. I think if no. Paul... If the Real Madrid or something, oh, he'd well, be like yeah, the I best transfer ever. Jump like that, yeah. yeah. I think if Pogba went to Real Madrid instead of Manchester United, you're seeing like the same effect as Jude Bellingham right now. Exactly. Uh, that's not crazy to say. It, not crazy to say. Not crazy to but, say. I'm not saying current. I'm saying back then. Uh, that team was stacked back in the day. That Real exactly. Madrid and, team. And, and he Pogba walks with them? into that Real Madrid team. He is the only midfielder in the world at that point, other than like Javi and Iniesta, that walk into that Real Madrid midfield. I might have to stop you there, Varv. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever Prime Pogba was better don't than Prime it. Tony Cruz. No. No. A hundred percent. He's more unique because he's... You've better. never seen a player like Pogba. Better. No. He, Paul Pogba can do everything Tony Cruz did. Are you not? No. Tony Cruz can't do everything that Paul Pogba did, without a doubt. In my mind, without a doubt. Paul Pogba is one of the best midfielders I've ever watched in this That's sport. F-tier Pogba on this tier list. Make it happen, F-tier. <laughs> no, we're going to be putting Pogba, sorry, Varvar, B-tier. I think that's the fair assessment. Up next, we're going on the other side of Manchester. It is Kevin De Bruyne to Manchester City. At the time, it was one of the biggest transfers to happen. Where are we putting him? Okay, well, let's yeah, make this we'll, short and quick. This yeah. is an S tier transfer. It has to be. And it, it's only like, I'm pretty sure it's only like 70 mil or something like that. Like something crazily low for one of the best Premier League players of all time. So there's no reason for this player not to be S tier. He brought them a CL. Yeah. He brought them multiple, multiple Premier Leagues. Yeah. Multiple player of the seasons. There's no debate that this guy is an S tier transfer without a doubt. And Pep's, I think that was maybe Pep's, one of his first transfers. I think it was a Pellegrini transfer, 2015-ish, right before Pep. That was good scouting from Man City, to be honest. Like, top assist man in the Bundesliga, carrying Wolfsburg. It worked out. Like, it, you got the treble, finally. And it takes some cojones to buy a player for that price, which was like the top of the summer, yeah. when the player had already failed in the Premier League before. So it takes, it takes... De yeah. Bruyne at Chelsea oh. failed in the Premier League before. Oh, so... so Take some massive cojones to go and spend 70 something mil on a player yeah. like that. Like 76 million in 2015 was no was no small number, that's for sure. Yeah. But obviously repaid tenfold pretty much. They ba he basically gave City the keys to everything they wanted to achieve when they were first bought. Yeah, and what's crazy is that they they had a plan. Like you saw that he wasn't just like a like you know, like with Enzo Fernandez, you you kind of see a plan, but you don't really know the direction they're going towards. KDB is like they know, right they knew he was gonna be the star guy. I think this is one of the easiest ones of the day, boys. Kevin De Bruyne is S tier. Obviously, Millie, which transfer are we going to next? Boys, we are headed back to La Liga for one of the most iconic transfers of recent memory, really. Luis Suarez to Barcelona. Boys, this is one of the best. S tier. Back to back S tiers now. I can't believe it. Luis Suarez, honestly. One of the greatest gravy. of all time. Different. You know, I yeah. saw I saw a messy comp recently on Twitter that this guy was actually like, he missed so many goals. Oh yeah. Imagine how many goals this guy could have actually scored if he finished everything. It'd like, be unreal. He uh, would he would he wasn't that far off the Messi Ronaldo levels. Well, yeah, remember that one year where he's he, like he won he the came, Golden Boot. Yeah, exactly. He won the Golden Boot one year in a Messi Ronaldo era. Like that's Wild. unheard of. Yeah, that's unheard of. And for a price tag, like it wasn't okay. It was a lot for the time, but considering all strikers, one of the best strikers of our generation. They got the best, the best, right next to Harry Kane. No, Firms, I'm gonna have to agree with you there. Suarez to Barca for 80 million euros. May not seem like a lot now. And honestly, looking back, I think that was a bargain. This is automatically an S tier. Suarez is pretty much one of the best strikers of our generation and one of the best strikers all time if you're looking at everything. And just to add, you know how Liverpool spent that Suarez money? You tell oh. them, Varvar. They bought, they loaned, first of all, 
Mario Balotelli, the who, en who ended up scoring like one, zero or one goals for Liverpool. Respect the greatness. They bought Ricky Lambert from Southampton. I don't even know who that is. Exactly, probably <laughs> proven. And then I'm pretty sure they bought like Jordan Ibe, who does, doesn't even play like professional soccer now. Like it was the worst spending of 80 mil I've ever seen in my life. They got Barini starting too. Back oh, that too. They loaned Barini, Barini I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. What was Liverpool doing? They were like, cooking. They were that was the pre Italian revolution. That was pre Klopp. Pre Klopp was dangerous. Times. That was really dangerous. Liverpool. Fans. Liverpool. <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> no, look, Rock. as a Man United fan, I don't even think we've reached that levels of desperation. As a I'm, Milan fan, uh, we've had. Boys, I'm not even surprised. One of the easiest S tiers of the day. The last one on the block. Madridista, stand up. It is Gareth Bale to Real Madrid. Where are we putting him? He said, Madridista, stand up. I'm standing up. I'm stand right up. here. Stand up. I'm right here. Where are you putting him, Varvar? Look, look. My God, I, I can't believe I have to do this. Don't do it. But if Neymar to PSG is A tier, Bale is A tier also. It's not an S tier transfer. You, oh. It's not well to say, but I think he is an S tier just because what he did for Madrid in that short amount of time is incredible. Who, like, you know, who could have done that? Neymar did more for PSG than Bale did for Real Madrid. No. Yes, he did. Bale's one of the first names on the team sheet when you're thinking of that prime Real Madrid. Is he? Is he? Yes, yes BBC, yes. bro. Is he, though? Yes. yes. Look, Sergio Ramos ahead of him on that team sheet. 100% ahead of him. Okay, but that's fine. Modric, at that. Cruz, and Casemiro ahead of him on but that team sheet. But those are positions that Bale doesn't play. Yeah. <laughs> Who okay, is scoring the goals, bro? He's the, like, he, he wasn't the man on those teams. Because Ronaldo was Ronaldo there. was there. Everyone but, was in their prime. But exactly. He wasn't even the second man or the third man. He was second. He was second. Sergio it was Ramos Ronaldo, was Bale. Okay, Sergio but Sergio Ramos. Ramos is... For goal scoring. Goal scoring, yeah. it was Ronaldo first, Bale, Bale second, goal Benzema scoring. third. Goal scoring. Yeah, but which that's is what he got one, paid to do. Neymar was the man. Well, he did not play Every on Every single like, aspect. Like Real Madrid. He did not play Mbappe on Mbappe was on his team. Neymar was still the man. Okay, did, P did PSG have a Ramos? Did they have a Casemiro? Did they have a Modric? But how does exactly. that, how is that supposed to hurt Neymar's transfer? Like, if Neymar is A, I can't find the justification to put Bale S. I think both are S. To be honest, if I had to say, but it's just, if I put Neymar A, Bale can be higher than Neymar. How many, how many Champions League final goals does Bale have? How many? Multiple. Because he's just that guy. He was always clutch. Kai Havertz has more Champions League final goals than, or the same as Neymar. Does that mean that Kai Havertz is S tier? Brothers. Oh my God. Brothers, <laughs> when you think of Real Madrid, when you think of Zidane's Real Madrid, the f second person you think of, third person you think of, if you're considering Sergio Ramos, is Bale. Yes. I disagree. I 100% agree. Modric. Modric, Sergio Ramos, Ronaldo. No. Though, that was the top three most important players of that team. But that doesn't make Bale's transfer not a worth it transfer. But, we, like, he wasn't the guy that they bought him to be. Brother, they bought him to be Ronaldo's like sidekick. Yeah, but he scored he, a bicycle he kick. He ended like up that. being like toward that 2018 Champions League. He really like he scored the bicycle kick, but Bale wasn't himself that season. Like it wasn't like Bale was the the when when you saw the team sheet it wasn't like oh my god how are we going to defend Bale tonight oh my like god. oh i think oh, yeah 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 no 100% it was oh in my in 2014 goodness. i agree in 2014 2015 2016 yes yes but towards the end when he was collecting those champions leagues he wasn't the guy and the the natural transition when I'm sure when Real Madrid bought Bale, they thought the natural transition was going to be Ronaldo to Bale. It That's ended up being though. Ronaldo to Benzema. Bale, there was never a Bale era in Real Madrid. Because he left by the time, like, the transition wasn't there, but it doesn't discount what he did throughout his whole tenure. I agree, but I, I think he's, uh, look, you're, you're We're arguing because, the same thing. because <laughs> of our tier list, how we have it shaped, He's an eight tier. He cannot be above Neymar to PSG. He can't. He can't. I I don't know how he can't be. I, I don't get it's, it. It's crazy to me. Five Champions Leagues. Yeah. Like, and he was con he contributed to every single one of them. Every single one of them. He had a part to play in. Yeah. But would you rather just be on the team 
then be the guy on a team that almost won it? He, it's not that he was He wasn't just on, on, the, on the, team. the team. He was that guy. No, but- Bro, you tell him. You yes. tell him first. He was you, always in the shadows. He wasn't... But so was Neymar with Mbappe, no, technically. No, he wasn't. No, he technically wasn't. Was. Neymar was the guy. Mbappe was in the shadows. But especially near the end, Neymar started Towards drifting. Towards the end. The champions, the year they made Champions League final, who was the best player on the team? Who, uh, PSG? Yeah. Well, Neymar, obviously. So, the, where did Mbappe bring them? But Mbappe was there to Mb support. Mbappe was right there. Yeah. It's not that there was, it was a whole yes. tier off. But when you talk about that PSG team, it was not Mbappe's team. It was Neymar's team. Look, if you want to put a mess here, we can put a mess here. But I, I just, me as a Madridista, I'm a Madridista too. Gareth Bale is one of my favorite players of all time. It's Neymar, Gareth Bale, and Pogba. Without a doubt, my top three favorite players of all time. Exotic pick. Marcus Rashford, number four. But. Oh my God. Whatever, if we're putting mess here, we're putting mess here. I'm not going to say against it because I think he is mess here. For honestly, firms, we, we conceded a lot. Like okay. a lot of times we said, Varvar set a tier and we did one higher or lower. Right. I think we could concede this one. I think we could give Bale A tier. I disagree. I, I don't see how Bale could be an A tier. I, Bale was so influential to the sport. Like I remember That's when why. we were 13, 14 years old. Like I bought a Bale jersey. There's a Bale jersey right here somewhere. Somewhere it's in the it's a, it's in the it's back. In the back. It's on display. But I, I I I see I see what you're saying. Neymar and Bale same level. I like, don't transfer wise. I love Neymar and I love Bale. I I, but. I know I love them both. I love them both. I think that if they were in my like footballers of the tw the twenty tw uh, twenty tens, they're both S tier. Or if we're like, S tier under Ronaldo like Messi, yeah, like yeah, yeah. they are goaded. But just if Neymar's A, yeah, we have to put Bale A in my opinion. Millie, you're the host. I'll let you decide. But for me, this is a clear, clear S. Firms, although I do agree with you, he ha he is an S tier player. We have to concede it to Varvar this time. I think it's only fair. We'll give him A tier bail with Neymar in the A tier spot. And boys, that is our tier list. What do you think? I honestly think it shaped up pretty nice. I, Neymar and Bale is very, very debatable. But yeah. I think we got we, we did pretty well, to be honest. Especially in the lower tiers, like with Havertz and, and uh, Joao Felix. I think we kind of gauged the... The difference between them, you know? Listen, you're looking at A tiers like Neymar, Bale, B tier, Rice, Enzo, Pogba. Like, when you're looking at Felix and Havertz. Now, Enzo's in the same tier as Pogba? We, oh, we, we did might, that, brother. We might have to make some corrections here. We might have to make some corrections. Listen, let us know in the comments down below if we have to make any corrections. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys all next week. See you guys next week. And let us know if you have any other topics you want us to tier list. Let us know.